So today we'll be presenting on the approach to syncope. Patient presenting with syncope to the emergency. Uh, patient presenting with the syncope to the emergency department can pose a significant diagnostic challenge. The main two reasons here is that syncope is a symptom, it's not a diagnosis. So we need to search for the underlying cause. And the second is that the adverse event can occur when none are the obvious or predictable during our ED evaluation. We know that the rate of the adverse event in the first 30 days may approach 25%. Here are the four main components of syncope. It is an abrupt transient loss of consciousness with loss of postural tone, whereby the patient will, upon standing, will fall to the ground, or when the patient sitting, they will slip from the seat. It is a short duration with spontaneous recovery, more uh, less than five uh, minutes at most, A syncope problem is common, although the loss of consciousness may occur without warning. When the patient will be presenting with nausea, light headedness, diaphoresis, and or visual disturbance that can precede the loss of consciousness for several seconds to minutes. In the presence of pre-syncope, where the occurrence of the prodrome without a subsequent loss of consciousness. So here we classify syncope into three main uh, category, which is neurally mediated, cardiac, and autostatic. Low risk patient with a single episode of syncope can often be assured with no further investigation, while for high risk patient, cardiovascular or structural heart disease, history concerning for arrhythmia, abnormal ECG, or severe comorbidity should be admitted to hospital for further evaluation. Let's move on to the first, the most common category of syncope, which is the neurally mediated syncope. The most common are the base, almost 70% uh, of the syncope is the vasovagal syncope. It is limited by female. Heat exposure, severe painful stimuli or stress. The second will be carotid sinus syndrome or hypersensitivity where it is triggered by heat rotation or pressure on the carotid sinus. The third are the situational where patient complain of coughing, defecation or GI disturbance or commonly post-exercise. The most common form of vasovagal syncope it is result from excessive vagal tone with abnormal catecholamine response to the stress or venous pulling from the upright stance and impaired cardiac feeling. Symptoms of autostatic intolerance such as dizziness, lightheadedness, and fatigue. The next carotid sinus syncope, it is the most common cause of unexplained fall in the elderly, especially more than 50 years, and it is increasing by age. Activation of one or both carotid sinus causing the 
peripheral vasodilatation, hypotension, and syncope in carotid sinus hypersensitivity. The second category is the cardiac syncope, where present will be presenting with arrhythmia, such as bradyarrhythmias, ventricular tachyarrhythmias, and SVT, any pacemaker dysfunction or obstructive cardiomyopathy with family history of sudden death. The next group of patients come with a syncope attack present with structure, uh, severe structural cardiac diseases such as acute MI or ischemia, arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy, or valvular heart disease such as aortic stenosis, mitral stenosis, or pulmonary stenosis. Other severe cause of syncope in structural diseases such as acute aortic dissection, cardiac masses such as atrial myxoma or cardiac tumors, cardiac tamponade or pulmonary hypertension should be considered. Autostatic hypotension, it is defined as systolic drop of at least 20 millimeter mercury or diastolic drop of at least 10 millimeter mercury within three minutes of standing or head up till on the table. Other miscellaneous cause of uh, autostatic syncope such as drug induced like alpha blockers, antidepressants, or antipsychotics. Look, look for autonomic failures such as Parkinson's disease, diabetes, alcoholism. And the most severe is that patients come with acute blood loss such as GI bleeding, atopic pregnancy, or diarrhea, or vomiting. So what are the important questions to ask patients when presenting to ED with complaint of syncope? First, you need to ask what were you doing immediately before? Did you have any symptom immediately preceding? For example, a problem such as lightheadedness, nausea, or visual disturbance? Did you injure yourself uh, during the fall? you need to rule out any uh, head injury or trauma. How long were you unconscious? Basically, patient come with syncope, uh, with, with complain of uh, a duration of loss of consciousness for less than five minutes. When awoke, how did you, how did it take for you to feel back to normal? In a syncope attack, patient will come with a uh, prodrome and then, or, or without a prodrome, but it will recover fully for about second or less than five minutes. And you need to, need to ask any any witnesses saw the event during the syncope attack. If the loss of consciousness is less, is more than five minutes, you need to consider other causes of loss of consciousness, such as alcohol, drug intoxication, cerebral concussion, narcolepsy, or OSA-related hypersomnolence. If it's less than five minutes, any of the following uh, presents, like presented, such as Seizuring movement, any blood, any bladder or bowel incontinence, which is uh, mostly absent in the syncope attack. Any post event confusion lasting for more than a few minutes. If the if the those are happen, it is probably as a seizure. If those are absent, uh, probably is mostly a syncope attack.
physical examination. You need to check the patient vital signs, BP, pulse rate, and the temperature with the orthostatic pressure measurement, lying or standing. Check the patient house or capillary fill. Do a full uh, systemic examination like cardiovascular, respiratory, abdominal, and neurological examination. The most important diagnostic tools we need to perform on patient is the ECG, where we need to rule out the, the most severe cause of syncope, uh, cardiac syncope. Other blood investigations such as full blood count, the inner function test, and electrolytes should be sent. Perform an echo to look for any structural diseases and a continuous cardiac monitoring. Let's talk a bit on chaotic sinus massage. It can be considered in patients more than 40 years old to confirm the diagnosis of chaotic sinus hypersensitivity. The maneuver is a positive when it produces an systolic or ventricular pulse longer than three seconds or decrease in systolic blood pressure at least 50 millimeter mercury. The test is performed where the patient is in supine position for five to 10 seconds of massage consecutively to each of the chaotic sinus. If the result is negative, it should be repeated with the patient upright at, at 60 to 70 degrees. The maneuvers should be avoided in patient at a recent stroke or transient ischemic attack in the top lungs and in patient with chaotic brewing. It should be performed initially on the right because the maneuver is more often positive on this side. If a positive chaotic hypersensitivity test is associated with the sim symptom, then the patient had a chaotic sinus sy syndrome. Other provocative testing strategy, including head up tilt test, exercise testing, or electrophysiological studies. So which patient we consider for admission? If a syncope with a clear cause, if it is a serious cause such as MI or any cardiac structural diseases, after appropriate management, you need to admit the patient for further investigation. If there is no serious cause, patient uh, can be reassured and for discharge. For example, a uh, patient come with vessel vader attack or any situational syncope such as coughing, abdominal uh, GI disturbance. For unexplained syncope, you need to do risk stratification. If it's high risk patient, you need to admit the patient. If it's low risk, you can discharge the patient with the assurance. So what are the high risk, uh, high risk patient? Patient come with clinical history of suggestive arrhythmic syncope. For example, syncope during exercise or palpitation or syncope without any warning of uh, prodrome. Any comorbidity such as severe anemia or electrolyte imbalance. ECG findings uh, suggestive of arrhythmic syn syncope. Any family history of sudden death. Or patient come with hypotension with 
asystolic blood pressure less than 90 millimeter mercury. Older age group patient or any severe, severe structural heart diseases, uh, heart failure or any uh, ACF. Patient considered as low risk when the age of the patient is less than 50 years old with no history of cardiovascular diseases presented with normal ECG finding and the syncope symptom consistent with the neurally mediated or orthostatic hypotension syncope with unremarkable cardiovascular finding. So uh, this is the San Francisco syncope rule, which, which is commonly used by emergency physicians to consider for admission or discharge. Any one of these rule positive is considered as high risk patient in which patient with uh, cardiovascular heart failure history Hemo, uh, hematocrit less than 30%, any abnormal ECG or cardiac monitoring, patient come with uh, breathlessness or systolic blood pressure less than 90 millimeter mercury. This San Francisco syncope rule identified the patient who cannot be considered as low risk of adverse outcome after a syncope event. The, the paper, original paper identified 96% sensitivity and 62% of specificity for serious outcome. But different validation study have shown inconsistent result. This is one of the study uh, carried out by, by the researchers' uh, prospective validation of the San Francisco syncope route predict the patient with serious outcome. It's a prospective cohort study con consisting patient with syncope or near syncope presenting to an emergency department where it is identified and enrolled uh, between 2002 to 2004 so the patient with trauma, alcohol, or drug-associated loss of business and definite seizure were excluded from the study. After the evaluation, the patient will follow up and to determine whether they have a, a predefined serious outcome within the 30 days of uh, ED visit. So out of the 700 uh, consecutive visits, evaluated for the syncope, 1.2% from the total uh, ED, vis ED visits. The average age were 61 years with 55% 55 of the patient were women and 60% of the patient were admitted. 6% of the, result, the patient resulted in having serious outcome that were undeclared during their ED visit. So in this cohort, the San Francisco syncope rule classified 50% of the patient as high risk, potentially decreasing overall emission by 7%. If the rule only applied to the 400 patient admitted, it might have decreased the emission by 24%. In another paper for validation of uh, San Francisco syncope rule, where the other group of the researchers uh, carry out a prospective observational cohort study on adult patient presenting to ED with acute syncope or near syncope. The same rule was applied 
Um, but the result was in con uh, the hyper the sensitivity was around sixty to seventy percent, which is low compared to our uh, other uh, studies. Here we have a new Canadian syncope risk score, which is published in 2016. In this uh, scoring, they include patient come with vasovagal symptom, it will be minus one mark. Any history of heart disease, it will be one mark. Any systolic blood pressure less than 90 or more than 180, it will be two marks. In the inve investigation with patient uh, blood investigation shows ele elevated troponin that will be positive two marks. ECG showing abnormal QRS will be adding one mark. Any QRS duration more than 130 milliseconds will be one mark. Any corrected QT intervals of more than 180 milliseconds will be two marks. If the final diagnosis by the ED physician, a uh, patient having a vasovagal syncope, it will be minus two marks. And if it's a diagnosed as cardiac syncope, it will be positive two marks. From the scoring, Minus three to zero as considered as low. One to three as medium risk. Four to five as high risk. And six and above is considered as very high risk. This study is uh, yet to be validated and hopefully any validation study carry out in the future. So the summary, syncope is a common presentation in emergency setting. You should obtain a ECG in all syncope patient, and you must not miss life-threatening causes such as bleeding, pulmonary embolism, or cardiac syncope from arrhythmia or acute coronary syndrome. That's all for our, my presentation. Any question? Ada sesuatu kan nak tanya ke Dr. Lo? Saya nak tanya, saya nak tanya. Mau nak tanya. Aduh. Uh, lo, lo. If... Yeah, yeah. A 15 year old girl Datang dengan syncope Buat ECG What specific ECG changes That you want to look for Or what specific ECG changes Yang you should be thinking about That you specifically want to look for On the ECG Biasa kan 15, 14, 15 years old girl Or boy Syncope kat sekolah Cikgu bawa my hospital Then as usual lah Buat ECG So what specific ECG that you want to look for In this kind of patient 15 years old uh... 14, 15 you know Budak mm -hmm. sekolah lah sekolah menengah I mean Orang lain pun boleh jawab Tapi loh lah Look Depends for any Err uh... Yeah, what specific arrhythmia you Arith want to look for? Arrhythmia, uh, atrial fibrillation? Mm, or... No. Uh... Kadang-kadang benda ni ada je yang merenung korang di hadapan bila ECG tu buat. Tapi, because, you know, the mind doesn't, see, apa, the eye doesn't see what the mind doesn't know kan. So, macam normal lah, normal sinus rhythm. And anyone else? Oh, 
Oh, Yusri jawab dalam message. Tidak. Boleh boleh juga jawab dalam in call messages eh. Kalau malu nak keluarkan suara serak-serak basah pagi-pagi. Apa dia? It's it's relatively harmless lah tapi it's it's one of the causes for syncopal episode in young age patient lah. More usually in teens lah. Mm, any sinus arrhythmia? Mm, no. Ni kawan-kawan yang lain. Shalini, Ratish, siapa Nurul Diana, Koyim. Saya baca je nama yang nampak di sini ni. Izahari, Afif Nuha. Tidak Kena offer hadiah ni kot Baru ramai nak teka lagi kan Kalau siapa boleh teka dengan betul Loh akan bagi hadiah Look for any Wolf Parkinson Yeah Pandai lo. So Wolf Parkinson White <laughs> eh? Wolf Parkinson White Is a common cause for syncope in teens lah It's fairly Benar lah ha, bu- Bukan tak boleh discharge yeah. Tapi Wolf Parkinson White eh apa apa signs yeah. of Wolf Parkinson White on ECG? Dah lama sebut Wolf Parkinson White kan? Apa features yang usually makes you suspect Wolf Parkinson White on the ECG? In Wolf Parkinson White, uh, there will be a short PI interval for less than 120 millisecond. Mm-hmm. It is normal. But in Wolf Parkinson White, there will be white QRS uh, longer than 120 millisecond. Yeah, With a slur. Dia dipanggil apa? Nama Glamour benda Allah tu? Nama Glamour. Hmm. Dia, dia ada... Delta Wave kan? Yes. Siapa sebut Delta Wave tadi? Delta wave. Ah, Delta wave. Delta wave. Ah. Delta wave eh. So Delta wave ni dia describe as dia panggil slurring of the uptick to the R wave tu lah. Dia R-wave. masih dah nampak nanti you nampak everywhere lah Delta wave ni tapi Delta wave lah presence of Delta wave makes you suspect Wolf Parkinson White lah. Wolf Parkinson White itself yeah. doesn't cause syncope. Cuma bila you ada Wolf Parkinson White Sometimes it can cause A period of Tachyarrhythmia lah Usually AF ataupun SVT lah And masa tu lah patient mm-hmm. nak syncope Tapi it's very brief, very transient lah ha, Lepas tu dia Normal balik, patient sedar lah balik So it's one of the cardiac syncope lah hmm? uh, Wolf Parkinson White Okay, it's very common In young age patient lah Macam 14, 15 years old Yang syncope kat sekolah apa semua Uh, so sometimes if we don't know Kadang-kadang kita tengok ECG tu Oh sinus rhythm macam ni uh, Tapi sebenarnya it's Wolf Parkinson White lah nah? tak, ada, tak ada specific treatment pun Just refer cardio as a patient je lah For further investigation uh. Okay Satu lagi Yang ni a bit more malignant lah Kalau nampak ECG ni in patient yang syncope Kena admit Because high risk of sudden death Brugada ha, Pandai memang Brugada syndrome lah ha, Ni kena correlate juga dengan history lah Usually dalam family history Ada sudden death Apa semua lah So this one Kalau Brugada You have to refer lah ha, For admission Because uh, You know Takut the next syncopal Syncopal episode Tak bangun-bangun dah Usually kalau patient ni Betul-betul uh, Found to have Brugada Patient will have ICD lah Macam recently kan We have two patient yang ada ICD If anyone remember lah So jangan-jangan jumpa patient ada ICD One day terus dua sekali datang With ICD Don't confuse ICD internal cardiac defibrillator Dengan pacemaker eh? Completely different function Okay So bila Kata boleh bercerita pasal ICD ni 
Katalah patient datang dengan malfunctioning ICD. ICD dia asyik tendang je, you know. Asyik defibrillate dia. 3 4 kali in an hour. Macam mana nak turn off ICD? This is nice to know lah. Macam mana nak turn off ICD tu? Anyone has any idea? Magnet. Yeah, magnet. Oh, lain suara koi dalam 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 ni eh. So magnet lah. Um, saya tak sure sangat lah how strong the magnet need to be lah. Tapi it, it's magnet lah. Dia boleh switch off dengan magnet. You just put magnet dekat dekat over the ICD lah untuk switch it off. It's especially important uh, if ICD tu malfunction as in dia keep 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 firing lah. So because bila ICD tu fire patient akan rasa macam kena tumbuk atau kena tendang kat dada lah. So bayangkan you know kalau sejam sekali kena tumbuk kena tendang di dada tu tak selesa juga lah patient. So in the meantime emergency treatment is usually to switch it off lah. And then panggil lah the technician ke siapa ke Habis dah lah soalan saya By the way Slide low cantik uh, Pujian lah Nampak lah Ada effort Di layout Dan backgroundnya Thank you so, uh, Saya ada soalan dah sikit ni uh, Tanya Dr. Loh Kalau kembali ke Canadian tu boleh tak? Saya macam tak pernah faham Sebab dia macam Canadian security score Tapi end up actually dia macam kena ada apa uh, diagnose by EP uh, diagnose as uh, diagnosis lah maksudnya so macam mana nak guna basically dia punya score sebab dia dah ada diagnosis Ni personal opinion lah Saya sendiri pun tak pernah guna Canadian Syncope Rich ni Selalu guna San Francisco je Yang charge tu uh, Tapi kalau yang San Francisco tu Kalau ada satu pun Kita tak boleh discharge lah Ya yeah. uh, Itu je Sebab ni scoring Masih dalam validation So masih belum Boleh dikuna lah kan I think, I think Cuba menjawab soalan Amimah tadi Diagnosis in emergency department tu is diagnosis based on uh, history, history bukan history ni history of heart disease kan. Maksudnya history yeah. yang kita ambil. Maksudnya based on history kita ambil, diagnosis kita adalah vasovagal syncope. Then minus lah tu. Tapi kalau the other history of heart disease dah ada satu, treponin dah ada dua, axis. So, so dia in the end dia bukan macam yang macam visa yang San Francisco tu ada satu je dah kira kena admit. Yang ni ni dia overall score kan. Dia score yang signifikan berapa? Hello. So yang signifikan ha, so and dia, dia dia risk 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 of adverse event. Ha, so bila diagnose based on history tu kata visa vehicle dia cuma minus 2 saja markah. And of course kalau kata yang lain semua negatif dan diagnosis tu minus 2 Maksudnya the risk of adverse event tu sangat low lah Tapi kalau skor tu say katalah kira-kira yang lain say dapat 9 ke Then even if your diagnosis tu vasovagal event you baru minus 2 dari 9 which is 7 7 pun masih 40% dia punya, dia punya risk of adverse event So ni dia ambil macam total skor So yeah. berbalik kepada yang slide yang yang score dia tu. Ha, yang ni ni dia diagnosis emergency department ni is the your diagnosis based on patient punya history and presentation. Ha. So uh, dia just kira macam independent score lah. Yang clinical evaluation ni macam very objective. Sebab so, semua ni memang tak boleh nak tolak dah. Kan? Dia very objective macam predisposition to vagal syncope, history of heart disease, investigation ni semua very objective punya scoring. So, 
tapi yang kat bawah ni is the the subjective part of it lah uh, so dia cuma minus 2 daripada overall score itu je maksud dia kan masa ni maksudnya ni diagnosis yang you know mula-mula korang dapat sebelum result keluar apa label korang hmm. working diagnosis Dr. Hafiza ada apa-apa lagi nak tambah? Ah, sekarang ini tak ada apa-apa. Ada isu apa nak tanya soalan? Kena telur. Ataupun dia tak terus. Saya di sini lah. Dah lah dah lah. Ah, ni ada ada telur lah. Okay. Yang lain-lain ada apa-apa soalan nak tanya? Okey, saya tanya dekat ni lah. Um, apa, Koyim de, um, yang mimah ke? Atau siapa yang lain nak jawab? Saya ni daripada Bugada. Uh, apa panggil tu? WPW. Ini ada ECG yang boleh datang dengan singkok. Maksud saya selain daripada ACS lah. Ada hmm. siapa nak jawab ke? Live data ni ECG yang possible yang kalau ada ECG ni pun kena emit juga. Saya siapa boleh jawab? Eh soalan yang terbuka, loh nak jawab pun boleh. Yang lain nak jawab pun boleh. Dia ada mnemonic ke? Atau kisah? Mnemonic. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, Koim. Boleh ulang saya lagi? Ada mnemonic untuk ECG, Sinkop. Ada ke? Um, oh, boleh share dengan kau-kau. Dia hot flow kan? W, W tu both Parkinson White syndrome. Kita tengok dekat shorten PR interval dengan delta wave, white QRS complex. Lepas tu O, obstructed, obstructed AV pathway. Kita tengok heart block lah. PR interval, first degree, second degree, third degree heart block. B, bifascicular block. B satu lagi, brugada. L, left ventricular hypertrophy. Kita nak akan nampak high amplitude of the R wave. R ataupun apa tu? Uh, Q wave lah. Yang ni kita akan suspect patient tu akan most commonly akan ada Hockham or LVH or Aortic mm-hmm. Stem. Lepas tu E Epsilon wave. Yang ni kena google lah. Dia ada extra spike dekat ke rest complex dia. And then satu lagi R tu repolarization abnormality tengok dekat long QT ataupun short QT. So wobbler. W O B B L E R. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, epsilon wave tu ada untuk condition penyakit apa? ARVD tu, Arismogenic Right Ventricular Displacia. Ni... Pada ni tel banyak tu. Ya, kena-kena. juga lah, ARVD tu dah. Okay, ada siapa nak tanya soalan lagi? Kalau tak ada, kita boleh stop. Kita boleh share me kat sini.